Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today I have an exciting one for you guys, and that is a side-by-side -side comparison between the all-new 2024 Ford Ranger and that of the recently new 2024 Chevy Colorado. Now, if you guys know and have followed along here on the channel, I have done a feature and specification comparison between the 2024 Ranger Lariat and the 2024 Chevy Colorado Z71, which are gonna be the two equivalent trim levels uh, in terms of their pricing and the features and options and everything like that between these two different brands. Now, unfortunately here for this video, I was unable to get a Z71 Colorado to compare directly against the Ranger Lariat, but I do have a fully loaded Colorado LT, which is gonna give you a lot of what a Z71 does have to offer, minus a few key differences. And despite someone thinking this is a Z71 at the factory, via the bedside decal, unfortunately it is not. But uh, I do highly encourage everyone here that is interested in knowing the exact differences down to, you know, ventilated seats, some of the other features and options on these two trucks, uh, to check out that other video I did several months ago here on the channel uh, where I go into much more detail. Now here in this video, I kind of just want to do a general side-by-side -side comparison. We're going to take a quick walk around each of these two. We're going to sit inside both the first and second row, discuss some of the differences in design as well as the interior room, then jump out back, talk quickly about the bed spaces, and then of course, take each of these two trucks for a quick test drive and tell you exactly what my overall impressions are about how each of them drives, some of their similarities, some of their differences, and everything like that. So make sure you guys stay tuned here on the channel. There's going to be a lot of helpful, useful information here on this video. Uh, without further ado, let's not waste time and get right into it. So take a look at the two trucks in front of me. On my left, I have a 2024 Chevy Colorado LT Convenience Package 3 with pretty much every other main option group you can select on it, minus the available technology package, which includes the HD surround view camera system, adaptive cruise control, and a couple other features there. Uh, but overall, very similar to that of a Colorado Z71 Convenience Package 2 or Convenience Package 3, depending on how you look at it, uh, minus of, of course, the additional capability that comes with Z71, as well as those few exclusive features such as ventilated front seats. Now on my right, I have a 2024 Ford Ranger Lariat with the available chrome appearance package. It does have the advanced trailing package. It does not have the FX4, but pretty much a fully loaded Ford Ranger as well uh, with even the uh, optional running boards that this one has, uh, which brings the total MSRP of the Ranger over that $50,000 mark in terms of its MSRP, where the Colorado comes in right around 45,000. Now anyway, starting at the front end of each of these two trucks, obviously design is gonna be subjective and which one you think is the more attractive uh, in terms of its exterior appearance. Personally, I really do like the Colorado uh, appearance over that of the Ranger, uh, but I will say the Ranger has a lot of more uh, you know, additional features and amenities versus that that is available on the Colorado. So starting with the lighting setup, both are gonna have LED projectors for the low and high beam. Uh, you will get incandescent turn signals over here where those are gonna be LED on the Ranger. And then both vehicles are gonna have LED fog lights as well. But when you look at the lighting over here, you're gonna have the uh, more advanced projector setup, which includes corner lighting, uh, obviously the zone lighting around the uh, exterior perimeter of the truck, where unfortunately that is simply not available in the Colorado. Now coming in a little bit closer, obviously this one has the chrome appearance package. The standard Lariat will have more kind of dark gunmetal gray accents, uh, similar to that of the Colorado over here. So uh, if you're not a fan of chrome, you'll certainly not want to check that box on the Ranger. Uh, but you will have the availability of HD surround view camera systems on both of these two trucks, standard on the Lariat, optional on the LT and Z71 Colorados. Both will have front recovery hooks down below with the small air dams and air diffusers, much smaller than that of the new Toyota Tacoma as we have known. You will get front and rear parking sensors over here on the Ranger where those are gonna be only found on the rear of the Chevy Colorado. You do have the radar assist for some of the adaptive cruise control and other safety items where that is gonna be a camera only base system if you do option that technology package on the Colorado. Uh, but overall, they're really not gonna be too, too far apart in terms of their you know, front ends, but you will have a few more features over here on the Ranger. Now coming along the side of each of these two trucks, obviously because this one is not a Z71, it will have the slightly smaller wheel and tire setup. So coming to the wheel and tire on both of these, you're gonna have an 18 inch alloy wheel on the LT. This is an upgrade versus the standard 17 inch alloy wheel on this particular trim level. But this one has the 265, 60, 18 inch Goodyear Fortitude HT, kind of mild all-terrain, kind of more of a road going tire, if you will, on the Colorado. We're over here on the Lariat. This one, once again, does have the chrome appearance package, which gives you these specific 18 inch chrome alloy wheels. 
but it's going to be wrapped in a 255 65 18 inch Goodyear Territory AT all-terrain tire. And this is actually the exact same tire that will be found on the Colorado Z71 if you do equip that or compare that trim level rather to the Ranger Lariat. Uh, but you will get a slightly larger tire on the Colorado Z71 versus this one right here, but really very, very close in overall size. Now, because this one does have the chrome appearance package, you will get more of the body color accents around the wheel arch sections, where normally, like I said, that'll be a kind of a dark metallic uh, gunmetal look to contrast against the actual paint color. Uh, and then over here on the Colorado, this one being an LT, does have the normal body of this vehicle, which is kind of paint match fenders. If you are looking at a Colorado Z71, you can option those uh, accessory fender flares from the factory for, I believe, right around four or 500 bucks. Uh, to make it stand out and look a little bit more aggressive and uh, you know protect the paint and things like that. Now starting over here on the side profile of the Ford Ranger, like I said, keep in mind this one does have the chrome appearance package which with the optional running boards down below. So the door handles are gonna be chrome, the mirrors are gonna be chrome, and then you do have those running boards down below. Uh, you do have proximity entry on both of the two front door handles, LED turn center integration, the HD our surround view camera system on the mirrors with the zone LED lighting, which actually works extremely well. They are gonna be heated mirrors, do have blind spot detection, like I mentioned. And uh, with the chrome package, it does also mandate you or force you to get the optional bedside step, which is also kind of found on the Colorado, uh, but do keep that in mind. And then you have the normal four by four decals on the Ranger in the back. Now coming over here to the Colorado, obviously this one being an LT does have more of the body color or standard accents that you'll find on this truck. So you do have proximity entry on both front door handles as well. They are gonna be body color. You have the darker gunmetal gray mirror caps. The mirrors are gonna be heated and do also feature blind spot detection. Unfortunately, this one's missing the technology package, which does include the cameras for the 360 camera system, but it does not have any sort of lighting or puddle lights on the bottom of the mirrors, which is a little bit unfortunate. And then like I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, this one has the incorrect decal here on the passenger side, which is the Z71, which is supposed to go on Z71 trim level Colorados. Uh, but you do also have the integrated side bed step. This one mounted on the actual bumper assembly rather than inside of the actual bed like that of the Ranger. And then coming out back of the Colorado, you do have partial LED lighting for the tail lamps, including the running lights right here, but incandescent brake, turn signals, and reverse lights. Body color bumper with the rear park assist sensors. This one does have the optional trailering package. Chevrolet stamped into the tailgate, as well as your rear backup camera. Manual tailgate release with the little key cylinder. And then your LT badging over there on the passenger side of the tailgate. And then coming out back over here to the Ranger, you will find a little bit more LED lighting out back with the tail lamps as well as the running lights. And I believe you do get incandescent amber uh, turn signals as well as reverse bulbs. Now, somebody did point out in one of my other Ranger videos that the Ranger is the only midsize truck to my knowledge that actually gets amber rear turn signals. The rest of the trucks are gonna be a red design. Uh, so I believe that's a little bit of a safety feature in my opinion. Uh, the amber stands out in contrast a little bit more than red, obviously. And then you do get the chrome bumper as part of the chrome appearance package. Rear park assist sensors, you do have the trailering package on this particular truck. Backup camera, of course, and then your LED zone lighting with your manual tailgate release as well. So uh, pretty similar in terms of their overall features, not too much different, but certainly uh, several things here on the Ranger which do make it stand out versus that of the Chevy Colorado lineup. Now taking a look at the two beds of each of these two trucks, there is gonna be a couple of key differences. Now this one does not have the optional spray and liner that is gonna be available on the Colorado. It has two tie down points in each corner for a total of eight. This one being a convenience package three does have the 120 volt outlet on the passenger side of the truck, as well as the 120 volt outlet inside of the actual cabin. And then one of the party tricks for GM's trucks in general is gonna be the Stowflex tailgate, which gives you a good amount of overall storage capacity inside of the actual tailgate, which is pretty much normally wasted space inside trucks. So, uh, you know, a little bit of a love it or hate it feature there, whether or not you use it is pretty much up to you. But uh, a couple of key differentiating factors between the two beds is the Colorado is gonna have a slightly narrower um, you know, width between the two actual wheel wells. It's just over 45 inches wide at the floor between the wheel wells, where the Ranger is actually gonna be just over 48 inches. So that is a key important note, is that you, know, you can fit a piece of plywood be between the two wheel wells in that of the Ranger, at least on paper, versus this truck, where unfortunately you can't. Uh, we'll have to go up above it a little bit 
there. Um, but then in terms of the overall volume you can fit inside the bed, it is gonna be a couple cubic feet larger in that of the Ranger, despite the exterior dimensions of the Colorado being a slightly larger in pretty much every metric there. So do keep that in mind if you're looking at each of these two trucks. The volume is a little bit lower, a couple cubic feet here in the Colorado, uh, but it does have a slightly longer bed uh, in terms of the length at the floor versus at the Ranger. Uh, so it's a little bit of a trade-off in which dimension you're looking at or really care about, but uh, overall they're not gonna be too, too different, just a couple small important notes. So moving on to the interior for both of these two trucks, I first wanna start out here in the interior of the Chevy Colorado, given it's on its second model year in production in its current generation versus that of the Ranger, which of course is all new for 2024. Now this one being an LT Convenience Package 3 does give the interior and the overall seat comfort uh, a step up versus that of the standard you know, cloth seats or that of some of the other trim levels. I say that because the Evo Techs found in this particular trim and truck is probably the most comfortable seat that you can currently get in the Chevy Colorado, at least from my experience. Now I say that because you get a slightly different material depending on the trim level that you do choose and bolstering I believe even changes slightly as well uh, in the Z71 and uh, ZR2 for example. So uh, if you're looking for the most comfortable seat, I think it's this black Evotex on, you know, optional on the work truck and uh, found on certain trim levels of the LT as well. Uh, but the LT in specific does get some other nicer materials such as the soft touch armrest, you get the center console, and of course the leather wrapped steering wheel that is gonna be heated in this particular vehicle as well as the nice silver and soft touch dash accents. Now, when it comes to some of the other, you know, features and amenities, standard on every Colorado for 2024 is the nicer 11 inch, uh, actually fully digital gauge cluster paired to the 11 inch infotainment system, which was already previously standard uh, with the Google integration. Now this vehicle luckily does still offer wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is fantastic. GM has started removing that from some of their electric vehicles. If you guys have followed the channel and seen some of my other videos on that. Now this one being again, a fully loaded LT has the trailer brake controller, it has the Bose premium premium audio system, heated front seats, dual zone automatic climate control, wireless charging pad, single speed transfer case found on LT. If you're wanting a two speed transfer case with four low, you will have to get a Z71 and or a ZR2 trim. Uh, but you, you know, overall, I think it's a very nice interior, but I will say there is gonna be more hard touch materials in this vehicle versus that of the Ranger, specifically the Lariat trim of the Ranger. So uh, do keep that in mind as the interior does look a little bit cheaper and also does feel a little bit cheaper just due to some of the more hard touch plastics. But uh, you know, to wrap up in terms of overall physical space, I think there's plenty of room inside the cabin. The center console is gonna be a little bit higher inside this vehicle. Uh, and so is the center armrest. But personally, I kind of like that. And you do get the traditional shifter over here on the passenger side of the center console, where you're gonna get kind of a you know, non-traditional shift knob, if you will, over there on the Ranger. Now moving into the back seat of the Chevy Colorado behind my rough seating position, uh, the good news is, while I have a good amount of room behind my seat with roughly like two inches of leg room, I probably have about inch, inch and a half of headroom. And you know, width inside of the cabin isn't too bad either. Now, as I mentioned in the front seat, that also continues to the back. The seat comfort with this particular material and cushion set is actually very good. There's a plush rear, uh, bottom seat cushion, and even the backrest portion has a good amount of give to it. So uh, I think this seat is actually pretty comfortable, especially when you compare it to some of other GM's you know, products, which are typically a little bit on the stiffer side. You still get the soft touch armrest on the door, which is very nice. You get the center console or armrest with two integrated cup holders. You also have rear AC vents, USB-C and USB-A charging, as well as the 120 volt outlet down in the uh, bottom section as part of convenience package three. And then of course you do get the manual rear sliding window with the rear defrost functionality uh, found on some of the lesser trims of the LT. But uh, overall, it's a very nice place to be. It has a decent amount of room. Uh, and it is nice to see a couple of feature amenities that you do not get over there in the Ranger, such as the rear AC vents, which to me is kind of a necessity in a vehicle of this price point and uh, you know, type of style because it is nice to have a little bit of additional airflow for rear occupants, uh, even if you don't need it on a daily basis. Oh, and one other thing I did wanna mention and point out is that the Chevy Colorado actually has a split folding bottom seat cushion 
Uh, so you can access some of the jack and other roadside toolkits here uh, without having to lift up the entire seat. So it is a 60-40 split folding seat. Uh, but I will say storage and underfloor space is much more limited here in the Colorado versus that of the Ranger where there is gonna be some usable underfloor storage. So moving on to the interior of the Ford Ranger, uh, immediately it's gonna be apparent that this is gonna be a nicer interior to be in. And I say this for a few reasons. Number one is the material usage inside the cabin is much nicer. You have multiple levels of soft touch on the door panel, accent stitching. Uh, some of the buttons are gonna have chrome accents and then you have the nice silver trim that continues across the dashboard into the door panels. And then this one featuring the lighter tan interior actually gives it another level of flair that I personally do like. Uh, even if I don't like all of the chrome accents on the exterior. So overall, I think the material usage is simply, you know, much better here in the Ranger versus that of the Colorado. Now moving into the seat comfort, I would say they're actually very, very similar between the two. Uh, there's a good amount of give on the seat. You have basically the same amount of power adjustments and I really don't have any issues with seat comfort in either of these two trucks. But if I were to pick one, I would actually say the Colorado might actually fit my overall body shape a little bit better versus this truck, uh, just due to my spinal fusion, as I mentioned in some of my other videos, uh, where mainly it comes down to the headrest getting a little bit uh, in the way of you know my overall flexibility, but really either truck is uh, very comfortable and I don't have a problem driving either one. You do of course get the three person memory driver seat, which is actually not found on any trim level of the Colorado. Uh, but moving across you know, into some of the technology and stuff like that, you have a very similar size full digital gauge cluster in the Lariat with the you know, large vertical orientation infotainment system. It does support wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as well, and is supporting, uh, I believe, Ford's latest synced infotainment software. And overall, I really don't prefer vertical infotainment screens, but here in the Ranger, I would say it's actually not too bad to use on a daily basis. You have fixed climate controls at the bottom, as well as some manual climate controls below the screen, so a little bit of redundancy, which I don't necessarily understand, but uh, that's just the way they've kind of laid out the overall software in UI. You do have the premium Bang & Olufsen, I believe, seven or eight speaker in, uh, system in this vehicle, which sounds actually very good. Both these trucks actually have pretty decent premium audio systems with a good amount of power behind them. And uh, you know, overall, I think it's a very nice interior. Uh, you have all of your, of course, uh, adaptive cruise control, uh, safety systems, stuff like that on the steering wheel. It does have rain sense wipers, you know, auto high beam assist, uh, you know, a few more creature comforts and amenities that you're simply not gonna get in the Colorado. So I think from that standpoint, you're getting a lot more in the Ranger Lariat for the dollar versus that of the Chevy Colorado. But of course, there are gonna be a couple small trade-offs uh, not only in terms of the powertrain, but also the feature set, uh, specifically with the Z71 Convenience Package 3, including the ventilated seat functionality, which I really think should be included here in the Ranger, but unfortunately, Ford did not include that uh, as an available option at all on this particular generation, at least up until this point. So getting into the back seat of the Ford Ranger, well, immediately, uh, I would say there's actually gonna be a very similar amount of legroom behind my driving position. As you can see, about two inches of legroom. Now, I will say immediately the bottom seat cushion here in the Ranger in the back seat is much more firm than that of the Chevy Colorado. So if you are gonna be planning on using the back seat on a frequent basis, that might be something that uh, might sway me one direction or other uh, is the rear seat comfort. Now, good news is a lot of the materials uh, do carry through from the front minus the upper section is gonna be hard touch back here. You do have map pockets. You don't unfortunately have rear AC vents, but you do have USB charging as well as the same 120 volt outlet set up at the bottom. Still have the center armrest with two integrated couplers, which is very nice to see. And uh, you know, overall comfort is not too much different between the two trucks, I will say. You know, headroom's about the same, legroom's about the same. Uh, the only big difference I think is gonna be that seat bottom cushion, uh, which is you know kind of a big deal depending on how much you use the back seat. Oh, and the one other thing to mention is you do get a power rear sliding window in this vehicle where it has the manual type in the Colorado. So uh, if you do want to open the rear window uh, here in the back seat, you'll have to ask the people up front to open it for you uh, because you can't just simply reach back and open it. Now, the last thing to talk about is gonna be the underfloor storage. And well, uh, the Ranger does not have a split folding design. It has a single one piece bench setup, which kind of latched into place after you lift it up. And there is gonna be a little bit of additional underfloor storage in this vehicle, both on the left and right hand side with the larger cubby being on the passenger side, smaller one here on the driver's side. Uh, so 
A little bit unfortunate that it's not a 60 folding design like that of the Colorado, but uh, it is nice to see that there is substantially more under seat storage space in this vehicle versus the Colorado. And then if you're looking for the subwoofer location in this vehicle, it is gonna be located behind the backrest portion, which does flip down via a pull tab, uh, although there's not really gonna be any usable additional storage space uh, behind the actual seat back itself. So finally, before we get into driving each of these two trucks, I wanna to touch on the powertrain setups underneath the hood. Now, Chevy did make some changes for 2024 in that the high output 2.7 liter turbo is now standard on the LT and higher. It is still optional on the base work truck spec. Uh, anyways, this engine puts out 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission, of course, through the rear wheels or all four wheels if you do select four-wheel drive. Now, over here underneath the Ranger is the base 2.3-liter turbocharged four-cylinder, which puts out 270 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque through that of a 10-speed automatic transmission. Now, if you guys have seen some of my other videos, then you'll know a 2.7 liter turbocharged V6 is coming at a later date uh, for late production builds of the Ranger. And of course, the Ranger Raptor has the three liter uh, twin turbo V6, which produces even more horsepower than that of the 2.7. So there are gonna be different powertrain configurations available on the Ranger Lariat, uh, both the 2.3 liter turbo four and the 2.7 liter turbo six. Uh, where this is gonna be the only output and powertrain configuration available on the Chevy Colorado. Okay, so setting out first here in the 2024 Chevy Colorado LT, I thought I'd go ahead and drive this truck first because I haven't driven this one uh, in several months. And uh, you know, I've been driving the Ranger, so I think this would be a good way to tell kind of what my first initial impressions are uh, you know, behind the wheel of this particular truck. Now here, setting out on the roadway, uh, overall visibility, you certainly see a little bit more of the hood as it has a little bit more on a, of an aggressive design. Uh, immediately, my leg is actually resting on the center console, uh, which is unfortunately here in this particular truck, a little bit of a hard touch plastic surface. Uh, but outside of that, you know, I think the mirrors are gonna be a little bit smaller in this truck. Uh, you have about the same amount of visibility out the back because the actual physical mirror size is the same. Uh, but I am really curious to kind of test out the overall, you know, horsepower and torque because there is going to be a big difference on paper between each of these two. So, all right. So initially, uh, I don't really tell all that much of a difference, but I didn't quite put my foot down all the way. Uh, but the eight-speed automatic is going to be uh, kind of a big difference versus that of the ten-speed at least you know, from what I know of GM's eight-speed transmission, I think the 10-speed is generally gonna be a little bit more responsive uh, in trucks versus that of this eight-speed. Now, one thing I will say about the Chevy Colorado, uh, at least initially, is that you hear a lot of engine noises, which also means you get a lot of turbo noises, which, you know, depending on what you like inside of the vehicle, hearing those turbo noises are certainly cool, uh, especially hearing that turbo whistle, but some people might not want that and I think it does a better job of isolating the cabin in that of the Ranger, uh, at least in terms of engine noise. Outside of that, I'd say road noise is very similar between each of these two. Uh, so it's just kind of whether or not you want to hear all those turbo noises or anything uh, inside of the cabin itself. But I will say I kind of like it, but I could see it getting a little bit old over time, again, depending on what you overall prefer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just put my foot down and see how the truck behaves. So very interesting, the transmission actually, I think downshifted twice and didn't necessarily pick the right gear right away. And that led to a little bit of delayed response time. And I think there's a little bit of actually turbo lag, a little bit more turbo lag in this vehicle versus that of the Ranger. Uh, but we will have to test that out once we hop inside that vehicle. But first impressions is that power does not feel all that different behind the wheel. I have a feeling some of that has to do with the 10 speed automatic and some of that also has to do with the overall tuning of the engine uh, despite there being you know substantially more torque inside this vehicle you know upon first impressions it doesn't necessarily feel like it which is interesting to see now as usual driving over my bumpy section of road here this truck handles it with ease there's really nothing to uh, discuss here it does a good job of you know soaking up the bumps it does have you know a truck like ride uh, but that's kind of to be expected in this segment. So really nothing, you know, unexpected. It is a little bit on the firmer side, but it is well controlled, well damped, and uh, kind of, you know, what you should expect 
if you're looking at you know a mid-sized truck or even that of a full-size truck for that matter uh, it's just a little bit of a stiffer more taut ride uh, but i think both trucks will do a good job of actually you know dampening and uh, keeping a controlled environment now one thing i will say with acceleration and overall output is there's a ton of low-end grunt here in the colorado but I think the transmission is going to be the weakest link in terms of its performance and how the truck actually puts down the power. Because upon throttle tipping, depending on what gear you're in um, and what speed obviously you're traveling at and just how much input you put into the throttle pedal, that kind of determines if the truck hesitates and shifts down once and then twice or if it kind of just shifts down once. And then I think it's, yeah, it's just that transmission kind of being hesitant to what gear it actually wants to choose. Again, depending on the speed you're traveling and how much actual throttle input you give uh, into the vehicle, but there's certainly gonna be a ton of torque on tap, uh, which Chevy kind of touts with this engine. Now, after being behind the wheel for a couple minutes, I'm definitely getting the sense that this engine prefers to be kind of lower in the rev band, as do most turbocharged engines in general. Uh, but I think there's a ton of torque on tap down low. So if you're looking for towing or hauling, um, I think this engine would be very good at pulling a load behind the vehicle, uh, just keeping it below, you know, 4,000 RPMs or so. Uh, but, you know, I will say the transmission seems to kind of hesitate or, you know, downshift multiple times in a row, you know, fairly slowly just to get you kind of to the, uh, you know, throttle application and rev band that you're looking for. But once it downshifts, man, this truck moves out of its way pretty darn quickly. So uh, it doesn't necessarily feel like there's 430 pound-feet of torque on tap, uh, but it feels like there is a lot of torque available to the user, and I can certainly see why this truck uh, would probably tow pretty darn well uh, lower in the rev range. But when it comes to the driver assistance and safety technology inside of this vehicle, now this truck obviously not having the technology package with the adaptive cruise control, does put it at an automatic disadvantage, but even with the technology package with the camera base adaptive cruise control, I think the Colorado is still lagging behind uh, some of the other trucks in this segment that have not only a lane centering assist functionality, so it will actually center you in the lane and not just a lane keeping where it kind of ping pongs you back and forth, but the other trucks I believe do both have radar sensors for the adaptive cruise control uh, rather than just a camera only based system. So uh, I think the driver assistance technology is you know, adequate or okay in the Colorado, but I think it is still lagging behind the other two mid-sized trucks or the main competitors in this segment just due to you know, what the technology that Chevy has decided to put uh, inside of this vehicle. But uh, here on the interior technology for that matter, I think they're very class competitive with the you know, large uh, center digital cluster, the of course 11 inch infotainment system. The Bose premium audio system even sounds quite good in this truck with the uh, added center channel and of course the built-in amplifier. So you know, I think from that standpoint, it is fairly good, but again, you do get that sort of sense of you know, cheap materials on the cabin, which is a little bit unfortunate given you know, the price points of these vehicles really aren't that different in the you know upper 40,000 to near that $50,000 price range for a fully loaded Colorado Z71 and or Ranger Lariat. So I think that's pretty much where I'm going to leave this uh, you know driving impression of the uh, Colorado. A good amount of torque on tap, transmission seems a little bit sluggish or hesitant to downshift in certain situations. Driver assistance technology not the best but it does seem to ride and handle quite well. Uh, has you know a good competent ride quality to it. Sound system's pretty good. Interior technology is pretty good. Um, but you know I think some of those key segments in terms of overall feature set, driver assistance technology, and maybe the transmission are going to be the drawbacks that I'm getting uh, behind the wheel of the Colorado. Now setting out here in the Ford Ranger, a couple of things are gonna be immediately apparent, at least to me. Number one is visibility appears better in this truck for a few reasons. Number one is the hood doesn't seem as aggressive in design and actually does fall away or slope down towards the front, uh, which leads just a little bit more forward visibility, at least from my overall impressions. Number two is the A pillars and B pillars don't seem quite as chunky or large in size. I'm not exactly sure if that's exactly true, but they just don't seem uh, as large when compared to that of the Chevy Colorado. And the next thing that I notice is the mirrors are substantially larger on the side of the vehicle. Um, 
the actual area of glass that you are able to look out uh, behind you is much, much larger than that of the Colorado, uh, which you know is a design thing. They probably chose a little bit of a slimmer mirror on the Colorado just for aesthetics, but uh, for functionality, these mirrors do a great job, and I really do appreciate just how large they are uh, in comparison to that of the Colorado. Now, rearward visibility looks about the same out the rear glass, and uh, overall, both trucks aren't really too bad to drive, but this one, I would say is uh, much better visibility. Now, in terms of output from the engine and the transmission, uh, despite this one being down over 100 pound-feet of torque and a little bit of horsepower as well, uh, it really does not feel like it. Now, this could be partly due to the fact that it has a different rear axle ratio. 10-speed automatic transmission has different gear ratios to choose from, and uh, the tuning of the engine could come into play as well. But I would say, considering this truck's only rated at 310, 310 pound-feet of torque, it feels very peppy and moves around without issues. I actually uh, prefer the throttle response and overall uh, output from this vehicle versus that of the Colorado upon my initial impressions. Now, it could just be that Ford has tuned the throttle to give you most of your throttle with relatively little application, meaning uh, less pedal travel gives you more throttle. But overall, the uh, power output just seems very good to drive with, and uh, I don't see any you know, noticeable um, you know, need for additional torque. So however Ford tuned it, uh, and the 10-speed automatic transmission do a great job of maintaining uh, that 310 pound-feet of torque uh, on a daily basis. So I really do like that about the Ranger. Uh, interior materials, as I mentioned earlier in this video, I think they're much nicer here in the Ranger. Uh, there's no need to really uh, touch on that once again. Uh, transitioning into interior technology, uh, well, you guys know my opinion on vertical orientation screens, not my preference, but I think it does okay with the screen real estate that is available here in the Ranger. Uh, so really not the end of the world. I think I would prefer horizontal uh, like that of the Colorado, but this uh, large uh, vertical screen the Ford's not too bad. The digital cluster actually uh, looks a little bit uh, nicer and cleaner in the way that Ford has laid it out. It is the traditional Ford UI or a sync skin on it, so it looks just like every other recent newer Ford product with the digital dashboard up on the screen. Uh, so that's really you know kind of a love it or hate it personal preference. It is fairly user customizable, although I don't believe you can actually put the Google Maps or lace full screen Google Maps up here on the digital cluster like you can in the Colorado. Uh, so that is kind of a small negative, but I really don't mind using the Ford UI as a whole. Uh, it certainly does have a lot more customiza customization versus that of GM's products uh, in terms of you know all the different settings you can tweak, the driver assistance, the you know regular creature comforts, everything like that can really be dialed in in Ford products, which I really do appreciate, versus that of GM, which kind of limits what you can do and you know toggle on and off in terms of features. So a little bit more customization here in the Ranger, really do like that. And uh, you know, as I'll mention in some of my uh, you know additional content on this particular vehicle, including my dedicated review, um, you know, I think feature set on this vehicle is just you know better than that of the Chevy Colorado with the exterior zone lighting, uh, the power rear glass, Pro Power on board, uh, memory driver seat, obviously, and then we get into the interior materials, which I just mentioned earlier on in this video. Uh, as a whole, I think there's you know a good amount more in this vehicle content-wise versus that of even a fully loaded Colorado Z71. Uh, so that's certainly something to keep in mind, you know, if you're comparing some a truck that's fully loaded around the $50,000 mark is uh, you are just gonna get more here in the Ranger versus that of the Colorado. Now touching on the ride and handling, I would say the Ranger appears to ride maybe just a touch softer than that of the Colorado, but it also could be just the way that Ford has tuned the suspension and the overall damper setup because it still feels very much truck-like, uh, and you do feel you know bumps out on the road, but I would say it takes overall certain types of pavement and you know imperfections road a little bit better than that of the Colorado, and that also could come down to a little bit of the tire choice on this truck. It is a slightly larger diameter tire with a slightly you know bigger sidewall on the actual vehicle, so that could be a little bit as to you know why it feels like it rides a little bit softer, but I think the truck as a whole does handle and ride a little bit softer, which is you know nicer to live with on a daily basis as you still you know get a lot of the truck sensations, but isn't quite as harsh and stuff over you know certain types of road. 
Uh, but you can certainly feel the solid axle rear suspension in both of these two vehicles. Uh, you know, that's just kind of inherent uh, design to the suspension setup on either one of these two offerings. Now, finally, touching on some of the, you know, noise NVH inside of the cabin, I would say both trucks do a very good job of isolating you from uh, the outside conditions, noise levels, road noise, anything like that. They're both very quiet traveling, you know, at 65, 70 miles an hour. So I would not hesitate uh, to really road trip either one of these two if you needed to. Now, obviously, the Colorado is going to have the worst of the two driver assistance technologies. Uh, but, you know, some people don't like those, you know, driving with adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, etc. cetera. Uh, but, you know, if you're obviously going to do a lot of road tripping, then I would say, uh, obviously, the Ranger will have the more advanced systems available, even though neither one has hands-free driving capability, at least currently offered on them. So do keep that in mind. You can't get Blue Cruise, can't get Super Cruise in the Colorado, uh, but you will kind of get the standard systems that are offered, uh, which just so happens to be a little bit more advanced and uh, have a little bit more feature set here in the Ranger versus that of what's offered in the Colorado. But uh, I think that's pretty much going to do it here for this comparison. Uh, but overall, I think the Ranger is quite impressive.